Jerry at Fair Oaks. Are you sure of that, Jerry? Yeah, absolutely. It's Red Morrison. Well, who's Red Morrison? Well, it, it it's kind of a long story, Corporal huh? Dent, but, well, anyway. Yes. I'll tell you who he is. He's a lug. Oh, Tubby. Well, he is. He almost got Jerry kicked out of school, didn't he? Well, yes, but... Hey, Red Shirt, he's got a bad cut on his arm. It's bleeding something fierce. Is it an artery, Jerry? No, I know about that. It's just a vein. I know what to do. Put on a tourniquet. That's right, lad. Have you got the makings down there for a tourniquet? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, here's a little stick and, and a stone, and I'll use my handkerchief. Lee, what's a... A, a, a tourniquet? Yeah, what's that? Well, don't you remember, Tubby? We learned about that in Dr. Campbell's first aid lectures. You tie a knot on a handkerchief or some other piece of cloth, and then put a rock or something else that's hard against the vein or artery. And then you twist the cloth with a stick so that it stops the flow of the blood. I guess I missed that one. How are you getting along down there, Jerry? Okay. Is I'm the bleeding almost... stopped, lad? Yeah, almost. I'm just getting the rope around him now. There. Okay, I'm coming up. Yes. Yeah, be careful of those rocks on the sides. Yeah. Okay. Gee, Jerry can really shinny, can he, Lee? Oh, you bet he can. All right, now, lad, give me your hand. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, now, we, we'd better hurry and get Red up here as fast as we can. Has Tom come back with Captain Gardner yet? No, not yet, Now, Jerry. don't worry about who ain't here yet. Worry about that lad down there in the well. Did you fasten that rope on him right, Jerry? Yes, sir, just like you told me. Uh -huh. Under the arms, the knot around in the back. All right. Now, you there. Me, sir? Yes, I'm pointing right at you. You, you. You see that pole there, the stout one? Yes, sir. Well, you're on detail now. Grab that pole and set it across the well. Yes, sir. Oh, that ain't no way to carry a pole. Save yourself trouble and strength by carrying it in the middle so the weight's even on both ends. That's it, yeah. Lee. Uh, yes, sir. And stop calling me sir. Oh. Told you once I was just a lance corporal. Yes, sir. All right, I'll remember. Come on, come on. You're slower than molasses in January. Put the pole across the well. It's good and stout. So, now, uh, Tubby. Yes, sir. Brace yourself against one end of the pole. You take the other end, Lee. All right. Now, what I'm aiming to do is this. Put the rope over the middle of the pole. It's right in the center of the well. So as when we pull up the lad, he won't bang against the sides of the well. All right, Jerry, you help me pull. Okay, Corporal. You ready, you two? Yeah, uh, all right, right. now brace yourselves against that pole so as it don't slip when me and Jerry pull against it. Remember, there's a man on the other end of this rope. And the two of us pulling. Now I'm ready, Corporal. And I'm braced. All right, all right. Now when I give the command, we'll haul away. Uh, uh, Jerry. Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, all right, all right. Detail. Ready. Pull. Now, steady, Jerry. Yeah. Hold fast there, Tubby. Yes, sir. I mean, Corporal. Are you still braced, Lee? Uh, tighter than a drum. I won't slip. All right. Now, ready for another pull. Yeah. Detail. Ready. Pull. Oh, there. Watch it. His head's coming up. All right. All right. Attention now. Keep a tight brace against that pole. But see if you can work it over to the side. That'll work the lad over so we can grab him and haul him out. All right, now, easy there. Is, is that far enough? Yeah, better do. Oh, Jerry, Uh huh. grab the end of the rope. 
Take it to one of those stout trees behind you and hitch it on tight. Don't leave any slack, because it wouldn't be any use pulling this lad up and then letting him down again. All right, now step to it, Jerry. Yes, sir, Corporal. And, and, and you, too. Uh -huh. Don't loosen up even a mite, or you'll have the lad falling down again. All right. Okay, the rope's fastened. Good, 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 good. Now, now we'll, we'll let go, slow-like. There now. Ah, there she goes. Not going, Corporal. Good, that's good. Well, I guess you're worth a little something after all. Now, step forward and help lift this lad out of the well. Yeah, come on, Corporal. All right, now, under his shoulder. Yeah. There. Uh, uh, there he is. Now, careful there, lads. All right. Careful. Don't bang him around like a sack of wheat. You want to kill him? Okay. From the looks of him, I'd say he was in bad enough shape as it is without you rolling him around here. Gee, he, he's still unconscious. All right, two paces back there, Tubby. Let me have a look at him. Yeah. Is is he hurt badly, Corporal? Well, I don't know, don't know, don't know. I ain't a doctor. Although it be that I did a bit of doctoring up of wounds in my time. Yeah. Bones seem to be all right. I can't tell, though. That cut looks the worst. Say, it's about time that doctor of yours got here. Now, in my time, doctor was always on the spot when he was needed. Wasn't under this fancy stuff, neither. Yeah, well, they had to come all the way from the gym. Huh. You know, a bit of water do all right here. I can run to the lake and get some. No, 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 no. Can't do that. Can't take a chance on that kind of water. Why, well, I remember once, just before El Conny, one of the fool rookies used bad water. Brought on a fever. Yes, sir. Gee. What happened? Oh, now, look here. You think we got time to tell stories? Hello, Felix Dugan. Hello. Oh, that's Captain Gardner. Hello. Dugan. Yes, sir. Uh, come straight ahead, sir. <laughs> Captain, huh? A real one or one of your tin and taffy soldiers? Oh, uh, he's a regular army captain, Corporal. Served in the World War. He was in the Philippines, too. <laughs> Bet a hat he never went through the jungles, chopping his way through with bolo knives, with bullets whistling around his head like a flock of hummingbirds. He was decorated. <laughs> decorated. Nowadays they give away medals to a rookie if he peels a potato without wasting uh, the meat on it. Men? Uh, oh, oh, uh, right here, sir. Oh, thank you. Better have a look at him, Dr. Campbell. Right away, Captain Gardner. Uh, Corporal Dent reporting, sir. I uh, beg pardon. I, oh, oh, excuse me. You're Mr. Dent. Lance Corporal Dent, sir. Oh, yes, Corporal Dent. Uh, you helped the boys? As best I could, sir. Hey, you lads, attention. There's an officer here. Uh, thank you, Corporal. Is he hurt badly, Doctor? Hmm. Seems to be no broken bones. Pretty bad bump on the head. This cut on his arm is deep. But I don't think it'll prove serious. Is it safe to move him, Doctor? Yes, I'm sure it is. Good. Dugan, Phillips? Uh, yes, sir. Help Dr. Campbell put Morrison on the stretcher we brought. Oh, yes, right, sir. Uh, Corporal Dent, I'd like to thank you for helping the boys. Oh, Tosh, I didn't do nothing but bring a rope. Oh, just the same, I'm sure we're all very grateful. Well, thank you, sir, thank you. I, uh, I do hope the lad comes along all right. Well, this is going to be bad for him. Bad, sir? Well, uh, what's that mean? Well, I... I shouldn't say this to anyone outside of Fair Oaks, Corporal. Yes, sir. But you're an army man. You'll understand and keep quiet about it. This young man, Morrison, is, well, he's rather a problem. He, he was out of bounds tonight without permission. Mm. A-W-O-L, eh? Yes. Oh, that's bad, sir. No discipline, no army. That's right, Corporal. Oh, I see you're still at attention. Huh? Oh, 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 oh. Well, so I am, so I am. Well, uh, confounded, what would you do if a lot of brass buttons stood up in front of you after you had nigh on to 50 years of army behind you? I'd stand to attention, Corporal, <laughs> but uh, at ease. Uh, uh, yes, yes, sure, sir. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, I guess I'll just be uh, running along. It's uh, way past my bedtime. Gee, thank you, Corporal Danny. It was swell of you to help. Oh, gee, I'll say it was. We could never have done it alone. And Red was wedged pretty tightly down there. He might have smothered. Is he ready to go, Dugan? Yes, sir. He's on the stretcher. Oh, good. We'll be off, then. Uh, thanks again, Corporal. Oh, oh, don't mention it. <laughs> Just stop talking about it, will you? Uh, oh, say, uh, sir, pardon me, but uh, if uh, if you want to do me a favor, I... Uh... Uh, certainly, Corporal. Uh, what is it? Well, sir, you might let me know how the lad comes out. Oh, certainly, certainly. Uh, we'll have Phillips and Dugan come out here and let you know. Oh, that'll be swell. All right, but uh, but mind you, I, I don't want you traipsing all over. I, well, I might have a few things to show you. Well, good night. Oh, oh, oh. and uh, Captain. Yes, Corporal? Uh, you might know the old army saying, a mule can be broken into harness in more ways than one. Understand? Yes. Yes, I I think I do, Corporal. Good night. <laughs> well, good night. Uh, good, night. good night. Good night, Corporal. Good night.
Gee, that was funny. What? Well, what Corporal Dent said uh, about a mule. Oh, uh, as he was referring to Morrison, I needn't tell you men that this, uh, this latest escapade of Morrison's will, well, it'll be very bad for him. You mean, uh, he might get kicked out of school, sir? That might happen, Cadet Young. Well, I, I guess he knew what he was doing when he tried to run away tonight, because that's certainly what he was doing. I'm afraid so. Captain Gardner, do you... Well, I mean... Well, is there a chance that he might be allowed to stay? Well, I don't know, Jerry. After that saddle episode, things looked pretty black for him. But we decided a good strong dose of discipline might straighten him out. But now this... Now, this case will undoubtedly come up tomorrow. I'm ready now, Captain. We can carry Morrison back. All right, Doctor. I'll be right there. Uh, can't we help carry him, sir? No, I'll help. You men did enough for tonight. Just follow along behind. Uh, Captain Gardner. Yes, Jerry? Well, do you... Well, do you think that I might say something for Red tomorrow? I mean, put in a good word for him. Why, I, uh, I don't know, Jerry, but I'll tell you what. You appear tomorrow before the court, the faculty of the school, and say what you have to say. Now, follow along behind. Boy, are you a sucker. Huh? Me? Yeah, you. What's the idea, Jerry? Oh, I don't know. I, I kind of know how Red Morrison felt, having a chill on him and all that. It doesn't make you feel any too good about things. I ought to know. Oh, yes, but you weren't guilty. Red is. Just the same I know how he felt. He wanted something so bad that he didn't care how he got it. Oh, yes, that's, that's just it. He should have used his head. If I was up to me, I'd kick Red Morrison out of here so fast that you couldn't see anything but smoke. Yes, he's got to take his medicine, Jerry. But uh, I do feel sorry for him. You know, there must be something good in him, something that made him come into our room last night to apologize to me. Remember? Yes. Yeah, he didn't have anything to gain by it, because just an apology wouldn't make up for all the damage that he did. Beans, that was just an act. Well, I don't think so, Tubby. Oh, you guys are too soft. Listen, didn't he loosen the strap on Splendor? Yeah, but... But nothing. Splendor might have crashed right through the hurdle. If it wouldn't have been for Paul Warren, he he could ride swell. And Splendor might have been hurt badly, and they might have had to shoot him. Yes, that's, that's another way to look at it. Yeah, I didn't think of that. Of course, certain Paul Warren was the worst, but something might have happened to Splendor, too, and, well, I I wouldn't like to think of that. Now you're talking. Keep a stiff upper lip, Jerry, and let Redden take his medicine. Believe me, he's got a big dose of it coming to him. Uh, Gee, now now I don't know what to do. If If I don't try to help him, then Captain Gardner will think I'm backing down. And if I do try to help Red, then the rest of the school will just think I'm playing the grandstand. I don't know what to do now. 